On day 10 of the Donald Trump election interference hush money criminal trial, the sleazy underbelly taking center stage, that whole scheme to catch and kill stories specifically to help the Trump campaign was exposed again. A wealth of evidence from lawyers, a porn star, and a tabloid reporter that illustrate the frantic scramble to keep the whole project going, to stop it from going up the rails ahead of election day. And the chaos that ensued when the hush money payments came to light. On the stand right now is a man named Doug Douse. He's a tech expert who works at the DA's office. He comes after hours of rather extraordinary testimony from Keith Davidson. The jury saw the agreement between David Dennison and Peggy Peterson. Those were pseudonyms used by Donald Trump and Stormy Daniels, alongside a side letter written by Keith Davidson that, as he puts it, decodes the agreement between the two and specifically mentions Donald Trump. The deal was done before Donald Trump's election night upset, a shocker to both Keith Davidson and National Enquirer editor Dylan Howard. NBC News reports this on the conversation via text between those two men. Quote, Keith Davidson texted the editor-in-chief of the National Enquirer around 3 a.m. Eastern on the night of the 2016 election. Quote, what have we done, Keith Davidson texted. Oh, my God, Dylan Howard texted him that night. Asked what he meant in his text, Keith Davidson said, quote, this was sort of gallows humor. He said there was an understanding between the two of them that, quote, our activities may have in some way assisted the presidential campaign of Donald Trump. Keith Davidson also recalled Michael Cohen's frustration when he learned that he would not be going to Washington with Donald Trump after he won. Davidson said he got a call from Michael Cohen who said something to the effect of, Quote, Jesus Christ, can you effing believe I'm not going to Washington after everything I've done for that effing guy? I've saved that guy's bleep so many times you don't even know. Adding that effing guy is not even paying me back the $130,000, referring to the hush money Michael Cohen had paid Stormy Daniels. Keith Davidson also testified to the efforts by Michael Cohen to keep Stormy Daniels silent as reporters swarmed around the story in early 2018. He says Michael Cohen texted him this, quote, Keith, the wise men all believe the story is dying and don't think it's smart for her to do any interviews. Let her do her thing, but no interviews at all with anyone. He said Michael Cohen was in, quote, pants on fire mode as Stormy Daniels made media appearances, saying, quote, we were trying to thread a needle and hold off a breach and all the penalties that would come with that, where Cohen could file an arbitration or sue Stormy. That would be a whole other disaster. He added that Michael Cohen threatened to, quote, rain legal hell down on her. During cross-examination, Team Trump sought to poke holes in Keith Davidson's credibility, highlighting other cases he has worked on involving his celebrity clients. NBC News put it like this. Emil Bovey, Trump's attorney, is highlighting how seamy Davidson's world was by bringing up his past clients and the fact that he was investigated by state and federal authorities for allegedly extorting Hulk Hogan. Yes, it was Hulk Hogan Day in the ex-president's criminal trial. It's where we start today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. With us at the table, New York Times investigative reporter Suzanne Craig. She's back from inside the courthouse. Also in court today, watching it in person, our friend, former top prosecutor at the Department of Justice, Andrew Weissman, along with former Brooklyn prosecutor Charles Coleman and MSNBC correspondent. My colleague Yasmin Vesuvian is in lower Manhattan outside the courthouse for us. Yes, may I start with you? Um, it has been quite a day, to say the least, uh, Nicole. I, I want to qu talk quickly about the individual who's on the stand now, somewhat of an expert witness. Um, and I think it's an important context as you think about um, an expert witness talking about how it, it is that they went to um, come upon some of these secretly um, secret phone calls in which Michael Cohen recorded. And I think it's important because it establishes how it is they actually were able to obtain these secret phone calls, right? And they're putting this testimony the last 60 minutes of court. We got about 30 minutes until the end of court. So making sure this expert witness testifies towards the end of the day for the jury to understand how it is they came upon all of this information, these receipts per se, um, this evidence per se that has been admitted by the prosecution. Let's talk quickly, though, Nicole, through some of what we heard uh, between both Michael Cohen and Keith Davidson. And I think there was a lot of back and forth, it seemed, and kind of contentious behavior 
and interactions between both Michael Cohen and Keith Davidson. I want to read some of it for you, if I can, talking about why it was that Dylan Howard acted as an intermediary between Keith Davidson um, and Michael Cohen. At one point, uh, Keith Davidson says he can be a very aggressive guy and aggressive in the pursuits to protect his client, saying that we would bankrupt her and rain legal hell down upon her. Don't mess with us. And I changed that word mess because it was originally something else. You don't know who you're messing with. Much of the testimony that we heard today from Keith Davidson, and especially in the cross-examination from the former president's attorneys, Nicole, was all about discrediting the prosecution's witnesses, right? It was about discrediting Michael Cohen. It was about, it was about discrediting Keith Davidson. And it was about discrediting Stormy Daniels in different ways. When it comes to Keith Davidson, it's much of what you talked about, right? It's about discrediting him when it comes to some of his clientele, right? And kind of as an ambulance chaser, per se, of the celebrity culture, right? Clients like Hulk Hogan going after uh, Lindsay Lohan when she was in rehab, discrediting um, his testimony and the things that he said, saying that Michael Cohen was being directed uh, by Donald Trump to act, to, to obtain the hush money um, that was handed over to Stormy Daniels. And then Stormy Daniels, seeming as if um, she was... Uh, had an axe to grind because Donald Trump had not cast her in The Apprentice, going so far as to say that she was going on Jimmy Kimmel because she wanted to advance her career, for instance. Kind of setting up how this was going to go when it comes to some of the star witness testimony that we will likely get from Michael Cohen, um, from Stormy Daniels as well. The one thing, though, that I will say is that the prosecution successfully showed the receipts before the cross-examination. And I say this because there was a moment in which they talked about David Dennison, right? The pseudonym that was used for Donald Trump that was also revealed to be used for Hulk Hogan as well. And they asked whether or not David Dennison signed the agreement between Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels when that $130,000 was paid to Stormy Daniels. And the prosecution, Nicole, was the one who first revealed that to the jury. It was that which the, which which um, which Donald Trump's attorneys ended their cross-examination with. But it was important, I think, for the prosecution to bring that up, to say, listen, we know this happened, right? We know David Dennison did not sign uh, this agreement. But then subsequently, it was what the prosecution ended, excuse me, the defense ended their cross-examination on. Um, it seems to be the strategy with David Pecker and Keith Davidson to say these guys are mixed up with shady characters. It wasn't just this way with Donald Trump when it, when it came to Pecker being on the stand. They did this to Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in Keith Davidson's case, they seem to try to dirty him up. I, I, I wonder how effective that is when these are people that Donald Trump was involved in, not Alvin Bragg. Right. It, 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 there was a point this morning and early this afternoon where you're, you're saying, what, what's going on here? And I have to say, they went much harder after Keith Davidson than they did David Pecker, and we can talk about that in a moment. We've been we've been sort of chatting about that, but I think where they're going, because on one hand you'd think they would have just stopped at Keith Davidson. Have you ever met Donald Trump? Right. No, because they've got to prove this conspiracy, and when you when you distill this case, it still comes down to there's going to be a conspiracy, but then you've got to get to the falsification of the business records. Right. So you would have thought they would have stopped there, and it became apparent to me as they were going through the. The, the cross of Keith Davidson and just how vicious it was, that I think they're trying to make Keith Davidson and Michael Cohen out to be these two scoundrels that were conspiring, and Donald Trump is the victim. They got into this huge... Of what? Of an extortion plot that he was being extorted. And you got into this back and forth that was incredible between Donald Trump's lawyer and Keith Davidson, where he kept saying, well, did you extort this person or that person? And he finally said, I had a civil agreement for which there was payment. I'm paraphrasing. Uh -huh. He goes, I'm not extorting anybody. But that kept coming up over and over. And I think that, that was sort of the, the, the storyline that emerged to me that this is potentially where they're going with this. I'm curious what what Andrew thought, but that's sort of where sure. we were sort of landing on that as we were talking. Um, so I agree. I mean, I was struck by, if you think about sort of what happened today, it should have happened with David Pecker. And so the surprising thing was there was a very, very vociferous cross, um, and there, it, there was, it was, you know, there was fireworks in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. um, but you were like, to what end? 
Um, you know, the well, and I guess that's my point. So, so say you prove beyond a reasonable doubt these guys are scuzzy. So what? Trump yeah, was in exactly. business with these but, guys. But, so, so you have David Pecker on the stand, and he's not crossed that way. But he, under his own testimony, says, "Oh yeah, we were um, intentionally defaming people. I was intentionally supporting a candidate, and it was all secret, and it was to get somebody elected." I mean, it was it was the most <laughs> shocking. You want to talk about sleaze factor? I mean, it was. Sort of incredible. And your partner was? Oh, yeah. Trump. Yeah, well, that <laughs> was. The, 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 he's a principal, and who did you have the deal with? Donald Trump. Um, so, but there was none of that. And so it was interesting to me that the choice was made when there was an easy cross and a polite cross of, of Davidson Very just polite. to say, as Sue said, to just say, you didn't deal with my client at all. Everything that you know came through Michael Cohen or somebody mm -hmm. else. So you just don't have anything to add to the sort of false documents. Um, and so instead, there was a lot of drama, which I agree is going to be used as a distraction and closing to say, look, they're really extorting him. By the way, that's not a defense. It's sort of a, it's a distraction defense. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the, but just to focus on what was the import of Davidson, it is how you started. If I had to sum up the actual import of today, it was the quote, what have we done? Mm -hmm. There was no question that he was saying, and it wasn't just his testimony. Yeah. He, everything he said today was in a document. It was in an email, or it was in a text, or it was in a written agreement. So he was, there was no way to really attack him in terms of his direct testimony. Everything was in writing. And um, what did the prosecution need from him? It, so what they got out of him was this was about the election. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, and um, even on cross where they said you knew that you needed the leverage and you had leverage before the election mm -hmm. and not after. And he goes, absolutely. I mean, that's not a cross point. That is, right. that is a. That's the conspiracy. Right.